Welcome back to Devon in a series that will showcase some of the best culture and heritage, countryside and coastlines, foods and general adventurous fun that this county has to offer. In the last episode, I visited the Riverford Field Kitchen on the edge of Dartmoor and sampled some of their best seasonal vegetables before going on a self-guided tour around the farm. In today's episode, I'll be headed into the National Park to explore the grounds, gardens and interior of Castle Drogo and go on a guided tour of Finch Foundry. If during this video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my Devon and Cornwall adventures. Good morning and welcome to Castle Drogo. This is Britain's newest castle as it was built between the years of 1910 and 1930. There are really nice manicured grounds and also a wider estate so we're going to have a wander around and explore and see what this place has got to offer. I once again got a stowaway. I feel like last month in Wales it was the caterpillar, the earlier version, and today it seems to be the moth. So yeah, just walking along this path, it's absolutely stunning. We've got ferns, heather, holly. I'm not too sure what the yellow ones are, but I've seen these quite a few times in the coastal areas. And then there's just a huge drop off down to the gorge and you can just hear the raging river down at the bottom, even all the way up at this height and loads and loads of wildlife. We've come across a crazy ant's nest, which I've never seen one that big before. And obviously all of the ants have worked together to create all of that. And we've seen a few butterflies and moths and I was, I was trying to get a picture of this one on the heather. And then this one's just going, and, oh no I quite like you and it's just seeming to be making itself at home just on my shoulder it's absolutely beautiful and the wildlife is is just lovely we've definitely got some squirrels or something up there that are munching away or whatever nuts might be growing on these trees because they are just showering down at the moment. Probably shouldn't hold this up for too much longer. And I think I'm likely to get pelted either on the camera or in my face. <laughs> After having wandered around the formal gardens, we do actually have the opportunity to go inside of the castle. From the outside, it definitely looks like the most modern castle that I've ever seen, so I'm very curious to know what the interior design's gonna be like. I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed for an Art Deco 1930s sort of feel to it, given that that's when the castle finally was finished with the building. Whilst I was sad to quickly discover that the castle didn't have an Art Deco interior, it was still very impressive. From the clever architecture such as making archways narrower to give the optical illusion of longer, grander corridors, to the decadent interior design choices such as chandeliers bought by the couple on their honeymoon in Venice, it was all rather impressive. I especially enjoyed the tapestry depicting Troy, a classic story that I love to weave into my computing lessons when teaching students about the Trojan virus. The dining room was extravagant, as to be expected, and showcased an original menu in French, as was the trend back then. The kitchen was huge and featured many copper jelly mounds, but were also used for puddings and were enjoyed by both children and adults alike. The ovens and dumbwaiter added to the kitchen's extravagance, and not to mention the impressive architectural design of the larders. As I passed through the enclosed courtyard, I could feel how cold the air was that was being sucked in. 
We've come along to the cafe here at Castle Drogo just for a light lunch and when we were in Norfolk one of the things that I chose to have was the cheese scone so I've again gone with the cheese scone and it's toasted so the butter's melting quite nicely. Over there they had a roasted red pepper and tomato soup which went really really well with it. I was kind of hoping that maybe they'd have had the same thing on the menu today. Unfortunately not but they do have the veggie bean chilli so I'm going to try and see how they complement one another, kind of stealing their ideas, but applying it to something slightly different on the menu. Mm. Doesn't complement it quite as well as what the tomato and red pepper does, but mm, definitely doesn't offend me. It's still really nice. It's just obviously got that spicy, spicy kick to it that the other one didn't. I'm still happy I've chosen this though. I'm going to keep on munching through this and uh, got coffee and then I think we're going to wrap it up because the next place that we're going to go to is another National Trust property called Finch Foundry. It's only about 15 minutes drive from here and we've got a guided tour booked so we'll see you there. So we've come along to Finch Foundry and you might be able to hear the really, really loud water that is just dripping at the moment and the turning of the water wheels. Now, we are actually booked onto a tour in just a few moments because this is one of the National Trust's smaller properties. So instead of people being able to just wander around, which obviously makes the social distancing quite difficult, we instead will be going around with a guide. So I will see you on the other side of that tour. The tour started in the museum section where we could see typical metal tools that the foundry made, saw photographs of those who worked there and got a feel for the types of wages versus the cost of living at the time and quickly learnt that labourers and apprentices had it rough. We were led out along the overhead leet which dropped down onto the water wheel known as an overshot as it produced a lot more power than an undershot. The beams holding this up now cost around £1,000 to replace as originally arsenic was used to hold off the rot for as long as it could. The term foundry is used to describe the process of turning metal into molten and pouring it into moulds. However, this was never done at Finch Foundry, so whilst the name Finch referred to the founding family, the foundry part is still a bit of a head scratcher. Here instead, metal objects were created through being heated in a fire and then hammered into shape, but not using a DIY style hammer. Housed inside of a very old part of the building which still had a thatched roof was the grinding stone where the peculiar expression of nose to the grind comes from. A worker would have laid on the wood and then bent over the wheel polishing or sharpening a tool against the rotating stone just finished the tour which was led by a volunteer and I would say that if you are in this area definitely book yourself onto one it didn't last too long it was about 45 minutes but truly fascinating and I think some of the favorite things that we came away with were actually some of the more quirky things like the idea of where the term top dog and underdog came from because of the workers who would work up top and who would work underneath and he was also saying that the life expectancy of people who worked in places like this wasn't very long they live until their 40s and so if you wanted to be a rich widow marry someone who works in a place like this but it was two thumbs up from me loved it <laughs> Well, after that amazing tour, we're going to take five or so minutes just to have a wander around what looks to be a very small village and some of the green spaces around back in the National Trust property.
that was a very small and tiny village that had a very small and tiny walk to match. It was very pretty. The village has got chocolate box houses. Some of them have got thatched roofs. There's the village pub. We even have the village stocks in there as well. And then the woodland out back has actually got a really nice stream, I guess would best describe it, with quite a cute footbridge going over it. It's only really taken us a few minutes to be able to do, but a nice way to be able to round off what's been a wonderful day.